My name is Jess and this is Knitting on Sweater Avenue. This is a podcast where I talk about my recently finished objects, what I'm currently working on, my new cast-ons and any new yarn or yarn related purchases that I have bought since the last episode. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Jess. I live in Melbourne, Australia um, and I started this podcast just so that I would have something to well, so I would chat about knitting, not just at my boyfriend at all times, but I'd have somewhere else to share. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get started. This episode I have two finished objects, although I only have one of them. Um, I have three works in progress. I have three new cast-ons, which is just a lot. Um, and I have a couple of yarn, yarn acquisitions slash I've got some new needles to show you. Anyway, I'll start with the finished object that I do have. And this is it. This is the Leon sweater by Petite Knit. I knit a size small and I have knit, oh, sorry, and I knit this in the Zakami, Zakami yarns. Um, here is my, one of my spare balls. Uh, this is Exordium, this is the colorway, and this is their 75% baby Surya alpaca, 25% silk. Um, and it's this like, it's quite pale, but it does have quite a lot of color variation. And I held that with Sanders Gone Sunday um, in the color 1012, which is whipped cream, I think. Um, I, I didn't make too many changes to the pattern. I changed it to a 3 by one rib in the ribbing, um, which I did across the board and in the sleeves. So I knit the whole thing on four millimeter needles. I knit the ribbing for the neck and the body on 3.5 millimeter needles, but I did one sleeve with that and I just sort of didn't think it cinched enough. So I knit the sleeve ribbing on three millimeter needles. So that's them there. Uh, as a result, I did a different cast off. Um, so the pattern tells you to do a one by one rib and then do Italian bind off. For a three by one rib, you can't do that. Um, so I did a adapted Jenny surprisingly stretchy cast off, I think. Um, and I adapted it because it tells you, you sort of yarn over in between, like sort of like a normal cast off where you like knit the stitch and pull the previous stitch over. Um, except you do a yarn over as well, but I didn't yarn over for the pearls just because I don't know I watched someone someone's video and they I think they had a two by two rib and they just did like an adapted one So it didn't flare so much, but I'm pretty happy. I feel like it's not too flared and I do like the way it looks The Italian bind off is very lovely, but I don't like one by one rib that much. So That's sort of yeah, I try and find other interesting cast offs um this is, oh, I want to, I don't know if you can see. I think you can. I did helical knitting from about here. And I clearly chose the least pigmented. So I had four skeins of the, like the Surrey silk, which was just way too much, by the way. I have a full, I have this much. I have a full skein and a half left, which for a color that is way paler than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with it. So I have a lot left. And so I should have picked like the most colorful ones, but I clearly didn't. So the first, like, I feel like when you look at it, it gets more colorful from about here down. And particularly like the sleeve, like the bottom of that sleeve has quite a lot of color in it, but the top really doesn't. So if you like compare that, wait, let me see if I can hold it like this. Maybe I'll just hold the sleeve. We'll hang it by the sleeve. So it's just like chalk and cheese, very different. So I think it's definitely taught me stuff in terms of helical knitting. Um, but I like, I don't think it's that obvious. I don't think that it makes that much of a difference. And I do think that it's a lovely, snuggly, comfy sweater. Like this is, Surrey silk and a merino is so soft. Um, I so I finished it this week, and I mean, so it's midsummer here in Australia, hence why I'm not wearing any knitwear now. Um, so it's definitely not cold enough to wear this, 
but I finished it and then I blocked it. And then the day that it came off the blocking mats, I just put it on in the morning. I was like, I'm wearing this. And I spent the whole day like putting it on and taking it off because it was too hot. But it is so soft and snuggly. I'll take, I took some pictures or like, I'll take some beat roll footage or something and put in just to show you what it looks like on. Um, I also cropped it. I don't, I don't like sweaters that finish at my hip. I just like, I wear mostly high-waisted clothes. So like my, my pants are pretty loose. And so then if like the sweater is loose and then cuts something off at the hip, I just, it's not a vibe in my opinion. So I, it's pretty, it's like, you know, it's relatively cropped and I just knit it to the length of another, of a, like a t-shirt. I have a couple of t-shirts, not this one, that I have cropped to a length that I really like. And I just use them to crop other t-shirts and to work out how long I want to knit. So it tends to hit just like, just below my, the like waistband of my pants, which I think is like a good, a good point. But yeah, Surrey silk, Surrey silk? I keep calling it Surrey silk. I suppose it is kind of, it's Surrey and silk. It's so soft, like 11 out of 10. I can't yet tell you whether or not it pills. It doesn't pill like in terms of, it did not pill while I was knitting it, <laughs> which one of my other projects is currently doing. Um, but it, yeah, I'm not really sure. The other thing I did, which I just remembered and hopefully looks okay here. Um, I, doesn't look great, lol. I did a provisional cast on under the arm which I then picked up to knit the other way. And it doesn't look any neater than if I'd just done a, like a backwards loop cast on and picked up the stitches. In fact, I think it looks worse. Um, but it was a fun adventure. I don't know if I would do it again because it really did not improve it. I think I needed, to, I think I need to just pull those stitches tighter, but that is in my armpit. So I'm not probably not going to. And I think that the, like the corners I'm happy with. Don't got any holes in there. So yeah, that's my first finished object. Um, and that's the only one I have in real life. The other one I posted legitimately two hours ago. So this is, I showed it, I think I must've showed it in my previous episode and I did take a couple of pictures of it before I posted it, uh, like in the post. Um, this is a an Oslo hat for one of my uncles. Um, I gave him the yarn for Christmas and said that I would knit him a beanie because I know he's doing a bit of hiking. I think he flies to New Zealand on Monday <laughs> um, to, I guess, hang out in New Zealand for a bit. And then he's going on a hike later this year. Um, and I sort of thought that he would appreciate uh, a hand knitted beanie. Um, and so I picked a color and I gave him for Christmas and then I've been knitting it up. Um, and then I, I needed to post it this morning so that he could get it tomorrow, um, which is Friday. And so then he can leave on Monday with the beanie. So hopefully that will arrive in time. I did express post it. So I think it's probably going to be fine. Um, he lives in Sydney. I live in Melbourne. So yeah, I was hoping to be able to deliver it in person, but the timing didn't quite work out. So yeah, that was the Oslo hat. Um, I knit a size medium. I started, so I knit myself an Oslo hat and I followed the pattern exactly. And then I knit one for my dad and I, because I'd gotten him to try on mine, I decided that the like, brim was like the the head plus the brim was a bit too like he had the fold over was going most of the way up his head and so i knit dad's to have a shorter brim a sli only slightly like a centimeter shorter brim and a slightly shorter head i don't know actual hat part of it um and that really that worked well for my dad and i when my uncle tried on my dad's one he really liked the fit of that so i matched that for this one which means it's a little bit less knitting and I have a little, had a little bit more yarn left over, which I have already used as I'll show you in a bit. Um, but yeah, overall, very easy pattern. Um, I really like doing the a provisional cast on and then picking up those stitches. So like the edges are really neat. I don't think I cut my, did I cut the, I hope I cut the, um, I think I cut the yarn before I sent it to him. I hope so. Oh, well, otherwise he can cut off the ends. Um, so yeah, that is my second finished object. Um, and I was gonna film this morning, but my partner was around and so I wanted to hang out with him instead. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm gonna go into my whips. So the first one, oh, I wish it was a finished object. I just, I've got, I'm so close. 
but it's taking forever. This is my Moby neck. And it is kind of hard to hold up. Um, so the Moby neck is a pattern by Petite Knit. I am, it's only got two sizes, a small medium and a medium large, and I'm knitting the small to medium. I am using Double Sunday in this colour, which is, did I keep it? Hmm, I'm pretty sure it's Camel. I want to say two, three, five, four. Wait, I know it's on here somewhere. Here we go, oh, there it is. Two. I was close, not really. 2542. <laughs> um, this is in the colorway Camel, and this is, strictly speaking, this is one of my acquisitions, this ball. Um, I had two and a little smidgen balls from my mum. She knit her Leon sweater with this as the contrast color, and she had a bunch of yarn left over, um, and she gave me that. And so I started this, and then I knew I wasn't going to have enough. And for some reason, I decided the amount of yarn I needed to order was three more bowls, which is just ridiculous. So this is the first one. I think this is the only one I'm going to need. And then I'll have two spare bowls again. So I've really not solved the problem that I had at all. But I have ended up with what I think is a super cute pattern. So this is for the Moby neck. You cast on at the back, and you sort of knit this like panel. Maybe I'll hang it up this way. So this is the back that I'm holding up and you knit all the way down and then you pick up the stitches and knit the neck into a turtleneck. And I've already weaved in all my ends, but I don't trim them until after I've blocked. Um, the main change I've made is because I don't understand why the pattern does this. I wanted my cables to run all the way over my shoulder because I thought that would look groovy. And like, that is why I would knit this like, no offense, kind of ridiculous thing where you'd go all the way over like surely one of the th main things you'd want to do is have this super nice cable continue over but the pattern doesn't have you do that it like only has I think it keeps three of the stitches from the cable but it doesn't cable them over the shoulder and so I increased the amount of increased the amount the like middle bit by one pattern repeat so that I could keep the neck the same width um, and I could have just increased the whole thing by a little bit, just to not change anything else. But I, I actually I took it out of the seed stitch on the side um, because I decided to do that after I'd finished the ribbing and I couldn't be bothered to rip it back. And so now the cables go all the way over the shoulders, which I think looks really cool. I don't know. I still don't know why you wouldn't do it. Um, but obviously petite knit. She, she, you design them the way you want them and I will change them if that's what I want. Um, so yeah, that is one of, that's my first whip. I do think that this looks so cute and snazzy. And even though my mother thinks this is the most ridiculous thing I have knit, I think it's so fun. I'm excited over winter to try it out and see if it works for me. And if it doesn't, it just looks so nice that I don't even care. <laughs> um, I will say Double Sunday. I feel like I watched, I was watching someone else's podcast and they mentioned that Double Sunday is prone to pilling, like even before you finish knitting it. And I think they're right. I think it's, I don't know, I guess it's a result because it's quite soft that it pills more easily. More easily? Yeah, I think so. Um, so it's like, it's definitely got some bits which are like, I've pulled a few things off, um, but I don't mind. I think it like, you know, my machine knit sweaters that I have also sometimes pill and sort of that's just the way it is. Definitely a bummer that it's happened before I've even worn it, but I don't feel like this is gonna, like if this is not being worn in a location that's gonna have a lot of like movement, maybe like the tops of the shoulders, but like it's got no armpits or sleeves or anything like that, that will get too much wear, hopefully. So we'll see how this goes over the like course of this year or, you know, whenever I just, whenever I finish it and wear it, I'm about halfway through the neck. Um, and it's just a simple one by one rib. And then I'll do a Italian bind off and that'll be like Italian cast on at the back, Italian bind off at the front, Italian bind off around the neck. Love it. And for some reason, I quite like the one by one rib here, even though it is doing the thing, the thing, you know, when you're knitting a pattern, you're knitting a rib and it like one of the, 
one of the sides of the v of the stitches looks like a line and the other one has v's i think it has something to do with the twist of the yarn i believe and it is doing that but it looks really nice on the inside and the cool thing about this pattern is once i finish the turtleneck it like folds down with the inside becoming the outside which is the part of the like of a one by one rib i think often the inside looks nicer and so that'll be on the outside so that's a win um but yeah so that is one of my works in progress and it does have here's a spoiler alert for the end these are my new needles it's very small and i mean this one's three millimeters so it's particularly small but these are some very short tipped needles that i have bought that i'll explain more about but yeah that is my first work in progress hopefully it will be a finished object soon so that i can stop so that i can you know move on to something else although i'm i think i should stop casting things on and you will see what i mean once i show you my three customs but before then <laughs> just briefly my socks i'm really feeling pretty chuffed about these because i used up all of the white that i had so this is they both look the same where is the other one one is lost but they do look the same here are my two socks um i have just got like i did a two by two ribbed cuff and i did like eight rows of the pink and then i did three or i suppose i went nine and then i did three 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 and then i had like i just kept knitting the white i was like there was just a tiny bit left so the bottom white stripe is four on both legs and i ended up legitimately like where's that white stripe this is the leftover yarn from that white stripe and there's that much on this one and the same amount on the other one i just cut it in the middle like that's they were attached with this in between um and then i was looking at because i was intending initially to do this with the yellow but i just didn't think that these colors i don't know it's like kind of a weird pink and I didn't really love it with the yellow. So I thought, you know what? I have this spare yarn from when I knit my... Um, what pair of socks was that? I knit a pair of socks last... I feel like I finished them last year. My They were my spruce socks. But I had just like, I suppose, enough, I reckon, to knit a pair of socks in. I have no idea what this yarn is. I bought it before I kept records, to be honest. Um, but it's a really nice, like bright red or like not bright red deep red very yeah i say i reckon it looks kind of like although i've never seen it in person in my opinion it looks a bit like the sorelli yarns taylor swift red colorway i think um but i don't have that all i know is like i saw it on Ninet's podcast and i think it looks similarish um but yeah it's got a bit of variation but it's mostly just this nice red um and i'm gonna knit these socks with the red instead just because I thought that was better color match. And these are going to become my work cast on once I finish the Moby neck, because that's currently a work whip, because I don't have to think about it. And then these are ready. Because yeah, that was the other thing. I wanted to have these past the cuff before they became my work whip, so I don't have to think. And now they are. So I'm good to, uh, they've been in my bag, ready for me to work on them. But I also haven't been going into the office just you know sometimes i don't so yeah that's my next whip and my last active whip that you've seen also actually has new needles on it and they're different this is my ooh, twist loops top twist loop top by other loops i think um in knitting for olive merino in the colorway dusty artichoke just it's like leftover yarn that i had um i i've been working i would say furiously for the last couple of days on these and the it just feels like it takes so long but i have finally i've nearly finished the second cable set and there's meant to be i think there's sort of three cable sets so i've got sort of this chunk another cable set and then there's a bit more before you cast off um and that's yeah i think it's gonna be such a win but i'll admit that the rib doing a couple of different rib projects and i'm just sort of feels like it takes longer and requires more thinking than 
stock in it. So I don't know. I think I'm also being a bit dramatic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've nearly finished the next one of those. This, I was, I had one set of, I think I had one set of bamboo, Knit Pro bamboo, three millimeter needles. And I was finding it really hard with these stitches to like get them on and like, I don't know. It was kind of annoying it. So I picked up just one individual three millimeter um, metal Knit Pro needles. Um, these are from the Mindfulness Collection, which I have a lot of thoughts about. <laughs> they say words on them, um, which I think, uh, um, in general, I'm not a fan of, although these ones say explore, and I don't mind that because I feel like that sort of fits with things that I like. Um, even though I do think, I, I, I think it's a lot to, to the other wo the words they have on them. I feel like I would, I would have been perfectly happy if they just said three millimeter knit pro. But anyway, so yeah, they're just plain metal needles. They're spiky-ish. I reckon they're less spiky than my Chagus, but um, I just wanted, I've, I've done a couple of three mil projects. I know that I like them and I feel like this was, I thought, I thought it was a good investment to work on this because I, I want to finish this because I have other three millimeter camisoles that I also want to knit. That's, I just like, I feel like I want to always have one on my needles because I have plenty of yarns for them and they just, I think they look so nice and they fit very well in my wardrobe. But yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. I have not made that much progress, but I'm trying my best. And I, ooh, what size am I knitting? I'm knitting a size, probably a size small, I think. I'll double check, but, um, or maybe the third size. I don't know. Based on my measurements, I'm knitting that size, but I will, yeah, I'll put up what size I'm making. So yeah, that is my last whip that active whip that you've seen before. And now I have some new cast-ons. What order? Maybe I'll go the order that I cast them on in, if I can remember. So I think, I think this was the first one. Because I think I cast this on immediately after I cast off the beanie for my uncle. Because I used the yarn for it. And this is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. And I, I think she had a sale on her patterns and I have been wanting to knit the sweep shop blanket. And I was like, yep, sold, done. <laughs> I think it's so nice. I people, my, showed my mother and my grandmother and they were like, oh, is this for a baby? And I was like, no, it's for me. <laughs> a baby's not gonna appreciate um, the A, the effort and B, the projects that I have knit, which this represents. So like, this is the yarn from my leaf cardigan this is a yarn from my uncle's beanie. This is a yarn from the the jumper I made for my partner, which can, you can see is a little bigger. So I'm hoping that I'll once I block it, it'll smooth out. So yeah, so like double Sunday, pig int. Um, oh, this is the Dianella eight ply by Blackwater Yarns in Myron Bateman. Um, and then my the like main color, I suppose. I am using. At the moment, I have two strands held together of the Sunday that I used for my Leon sweater, which is the, um, what is the name of that? 1012 is the colorway. So I think it's whipped cream. Um, and I'm using two strands held together because I have that, but I also um, have an acquisition, which I will talk about at the end, which is just double Sunday in the same color. I don't care if it's a different dye lot, I think. If one's here and one's there and they're different dialogues, I don't think you'll be able to tell. And I just would rather knit with double Sunday than Sunday for a DK weight yarn. Um, but I'm using up all the rest of my Sunday first. For which I have this whole ball, hopefully. Yeah, that whole ball. And then I have another whole ball that I just found of Sunday in this colorway, I think. Yep, 10, 12. Um, so I have quite a lot. And I reckon I can, I think I worked out that I can do at least five squares per five, six, 10 grams, five, nine grams, nine grams, 10 grams. I don't know. I can do five or six per ball. So 
I've got three so far. I think I had a tiny ball that I was holding this with initially that I used up. Um, and so then once these are both finished, I'll move on to the double Sunday. But I'm really enjoying just like, I went through my, I'll admit not, not very big, but bigger than I remembered. Um, yarn, like off cuts stash kind of. Um, and I found a bunch of yarns. So this is the next one that I'm gonna use, which is a, I wanna say it's like a Rowan baby merino. Yep, which I need a baby, I need a baby knit in. And then I like found this, which is from knitting my partner a pair of socks. So those will be added. I think we're gonna go gray there and then, then maybe over here. Um, I think that'll look cool. And, but then I'm just going to keep going with yarns that I have and we'll see how I go. I think I, I found like five or six different ones that I can use at least for now. And then as I get through those, I, at the moment, I don't want to reuse the same color, but I think it probably will look okay if I do like it as it gets bigger, I think it'll be fine, but I'll see how I go. Um, so yeah, that's my first, my next cast on. I found the instructions. Well, I initially bought the pattern and I started reading. And I was like, this makes no sense. I don't understand this at all. I don't understand this at all. And then I did the thing where rather than panicking, I just cast on based on the instructions and they just made sense. Like as I started doing it, I was like, oh, this is fine. The part where I'm still not super on board is this like corner, this like edge here. And I think it looks okay, but I did something different on this side. Like I've did the what the pattern said and I didn't like it and that's what the pattern that's what it gives you when you follow the pattern but it just like told me to do something which didn't make sense and I don't think looks as nice so like if you look here I mean it's, it's still not perfect but if you look here you have like the edge stitches and then they sort that sort of continues on like that first stitch looks weird whereas here you've got this like extra loop here which I don't love but I don't know what else to do. I was like, I found that that particular instruction, which was just like the instruction when you were picking up the next row, it was like how to start. Cause like, that's where you start this, this square. And this is where you start this square. And it's only going to be relevant on like the edge squares, which I suppose these are both going to be, but I just was confused about that. Anyway, I'm ready to start my next square, but I have been working furiously on many other things. <laughs> so I haven't gotten there yet. We will see. But I do like that at the moment it like folds up, even though I've got a lot of ends. I've weaved some of them in, but not all of them. But yeah, so that is my first cast on. Um, and this, oh, it's my second cast on. Ta-da! <laughs> this is not very easy to see, but it's kind of a nice dark green. So this is the Elizabeth Blouse by Petit Knit in my favorite color, dark green. Um, and I am about halfway, no, would I work out? I'm three quarters of the way through the yoke before I do the double knitting for the placket. Um, I am knitting this in drops cotton merino and I have two colors that I'm gonna use. I have their dark green, which is in the color 22. And I have um, their white, which is color one. And I'm gonna do stripes. And this is, this is a ball left over from when I knit my version of this. So I did the Maud tee with white and like a beige. Um, and I hacked it to have long sleeves and have stripes. And then she released the Elizabeth blouse which I really could have dealt with, done with because the more I had to redo my sleeves like three or four times because I, I, I kept screwing up the decrease rate. Anyway, um, this, the green is like, I don't know if how, yeah, sure you can see. It's like not a solid color, which I didn't realize when I was looking online and I don't love it, but I've bought it and I think overall the color like, I think this color looks nice, even if it has that little bit of variation within the stitches. Um, and it's not like, it's a bit hard to show you what it looks like. Even if I were to like 
fake put it on. It's on stitch. It's on. Have I dropped a stitch? No. It's on stitch. It's on stitches. Wow. My hair, putting my hair at the back was not helpful. Okay. And now my hair's annoying. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so it's gonna go like this. If my, if I had a bit more give, it would fit me better, I think. Anyway, it's not for me though. Anyway, <laughs> so I cast off my uncle's beanie and I cast this on. And this is a gift knit for one of my best friends who also lives in Sydney. And this is uh, sort of, this is her birthday Christmas present. Um, and it's a green and white version of the one I have. At the moment, have I done any? So I am. The pattern tells you to knit a certain distance and then do the placket and then also knit a certain number of rows and then do the placket and then join in the round. And from my experience of knitting, so I knit an Elizabeth, no, I knit a, I knit a Maud tee, which is like basically the same. Um, there are a few differences. I have both patterns and mum and I were comparing them because my mum then knit an Elizabeth blouse and I am also halfway through an Elizabeth blouse. It's here. I've made no progress. But I suppose technically I'm further along than this one. Um, and so it's like, it's slightly different than the Maud T. There you go, that's how far this one's going. And you knit the placket on separately. And this needs to be blocked, clearly. Um, and it's got a different number of stitches on the like, raglan. Anyway, I'll get back to that at some point. But they're essentially the same pattern. One second. Duh. Um, but from me knitting, knitting it, mum knitting it, and then me knitting another one, I think the placket's too deep. So for this one, I'm doing a few less rows before knitting the placket, joining it, and then I'll just do those increased rows in the round, which is fine. Um, so I am, yeah, I'm three quarters of the way down this bit. Obviously each row is getting longer, which means it's taking me a while to get around, but I really want to get it joined pretty much ASAP so that I can just knit on the round when I'm working from home without having to think about it because at the moment this is not quite mindless enough to do in meetings um, but I think once I do that I'll be able to knit it in meetings um, I'm knitting a size small she's pretty much the same size as me um, and I am really excited I think this is if if I didn't already have plenty of jumpers I would want this for myself so that's how this one's going I I'm hoping to get it finished by Easter. That's my goal because that's when I we're going down the coast with her and her family. And it would be lovely if I could give her this and then be done with my gift knits for a while. <laughs> um, well, maybe. I want to knit my partner another pair of socks, but I don't have any yarn for that. Anyway, I'm already on my third ball. And I only have, I feel like I only have eight or something. So that feels a bit rogue, but I suppose once I get past here, I'm going to be doing quite a lot of... Um, color work so I guess it will use less so we'll see hopefully I have enough yarn I had so much left over of the white that's why I ordered less of the green like when I knit my one I had a lot left over of the white so we will see anyway that is my second whip my second new cast on whip and my last one if you saw my video two weeks ago I think it will be um I was talking about what I wanted to cast on next and then I finished that and I was just like, I'm in an ring. And then like two days later, I was like, I'm gonna cast one of them on. And so I did. And this surprising nobody is the Brady Loop sweater. And it's going mostly okay, there you go. It, I do think, I still think it's an awesome construction, but I will say now that I'm going back and forth all the way round, it's taking forever. <laughs> so I think this one's on a bit of a pause until I get the other one into going in the round. Because I'm doing a lot of purling at the moment. And I'm not a fan. Anyway, so this is a very cool construction as I've talked about at length. Where you cast on at the back neck. Like here. And then you knit across a bit. Cast on, like do a backwards loop cast on. Cast on these stitches. And then get across to here. And then leave it. Pick up your provisional cast on, do the same thing on this side and then pick up all the way around, like pick up all the way around. And now I'm knitting back and forth, doing increases at the corners and keeping these cables. Um, I am knitting the smallest size, which is still giving me a 100 centimeter bust. 
This pattern is by Other Loops, and the yarn I'm using is um, the Merino and Soft Silk Mohair from Knitting for Olive in Mushroom Rose and Camel Rose, I want to say. Sorry about the plastic. Yes. Yes. Mushroom and Camel. And I think, look, it's pretty pink. I don't know if the pink is super me. Oh, maybe that's cute. I don't want to look nude when I'm wearing it, but I think, I don't, I don't know. Um, I do think it's a really awesome construction and I'm super excited to like get down a bit further and like really see it come together. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm a fan. The one difference I have made is I did, I have knit, so I have two stitches going along the edge. Is that what I'm trying to show you? Yeah. That's like my edge, my pickup edge, and I have two stitches along that side and this side. Um, whereas the pattern has like half a stitch. And I didn't want to do that. And even though like if you look, that's like the center back. So that obviously like the two stitches changes there. But I don't think it's too obvious. Slash, I decided to like, I could have had two and a half on one side and two on the other or something, but that's what I decided to do. I think it looks nice. Um, and I do, yeah. I just think the construction is so cool. And I love these cables. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about this. Um, but yeah, hoping, well, I have six whips, so at some point one of them will get more progress. We'll see. I'm not sure what, well, I guess I think my next cast off is going to be the Moby Neck, my cast off. Um, but I don't know what will be after that. Probably the sweater for my friend. I'm focusing pretty hard and then it'll be stocking it in the round, so hopefully that'll fly by. Um, but yeah, that is my last my last newest cast on. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about was, well, I suppose the last like knitting, knitting that I want to talk about is my finished object that's back to being a whip. I can grab it. What? So if you saw my like 2023 knits in review, is that what it's called? Uh, like what I knit in 2023 video, you will have seen this sweater. Also, I posted a video last year where I where I had finished it. And I've ripped off the arms. I unpicked them. I pulled them off. I wound them into two balls. The other ball is somewhere. That is a good question. Where is the other ball? Oh. I will find the other ball at some point. And I'm re the sleeves because they were too tight. I just like... They weren't like uncut, sorry. They weren't too tight in terms of like, I could f they fit on my arms, but they were just like, I just wasn't the vibe I was going for. Like I, I like a little bit more looseness. So I'm in the middle of picking up this sleeve again with my needles. Um, and I'm gonna knit the sleeves again. And hopefully this will fit like, cause the rest of it fits really well. And I like, I don't need to redo any more of it. And so I'm just gonna do the sleeves again, looser. Um, which will probably use up some more yarn, which is fine. I have plenty more yarn. Um, I've started knitting a whole camisole. I think I ordered more yarn to knit the camisole. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and they, they are really big armholes. Like, look, I, I do want, mm, we'll see how this goes. Anyway, it's so like, that's how big the armhole is. That feels huge. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but I have, I decided I spend so much time knitting that if I'm not gonna wear something, I would rather go through the whole rigmarole of completely re-knitting its sleeves so that I can wear it. Like, that's, I like knitting. I'm, I wanna do more knitting. So this at least means that hopefully the pieces in my wardrobe get a lot of wear and like I really like, and I don't end up with pieces that I don't like and don't wear. Or if I do, they get taken out, I do something else and hopefully I spend less money. So yeah. I haven't really made much progress on that. I ripped the sleeves out like a week or two ago and then I cast on a bunch of projects. <laughs> so I think this will happen sort of slowly in the background, but I'll let you know how it goes. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can convince myself to smash them out. Because a sleeve, you know, it's a sleeve. I could do that. So yeah, it's all, it's all on the round. It's mostly knitting. 
So those are all, that's all my knitting. That's all of the things that I've been working on. Um, and yeah, so some yarn acquisitions. You probably will have already basically seen everything that I'm about to show you. Maybe. I did an order from, I think it's called the Yarn Bowl, which is in Queensland. Um, and I ordered some mohair and some double sundae. And even though the colors actually do kind of match, they're not for knitting together. So I got um, three balls each of these two mohairs and two balls of the double sundae in whipped cream and three balls of the double sundae in camel. Um, these three balls were for knitting my Moby neck. Don't know why I ordered three. That's a dumb number to order. The two balls are for knitting the sweet shop blanket. I haven't started either of them because I'm using up what I have first, but I think they'll probably be all the way used up. This is all the um, company had, like the, that particular yarn company had. So I just got it all. And I, I'm not really fussed about the um, dye lot. So once, once I finished all of my Sunday in this color and all of this, then I will order some more. I don't think that'll be especially soon, but I just wanted to have a bit more of that because I didn't think I would have as much of the Sunday left over as I do. Um, and then I got three balls each of the tints of mohair in, what color is this? I think this is brown sugar, which is 2543. And then I think this is, yeah, this is 1012. So this is the matching mohair. Um, and these are for holding together with my alpaca yarns that I have from my partner's alpacas um, to knit the Rue sweater, which will probably be cast on once I finish some of the sweaters that I'm working on now. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my, what is that? Oh no, that's mushroom rose, disregard. So those are, that's my new yarn acquisitions. Um, and then I have some new needles. So I got the, that one set of metal needles, like that one, sorry, pair, um, just for knitting three mil projects. And then I was talking to my grandmother, who is knitting the Leon sweater, just like me. Well, I cast mine on initially to like work on it alongside her. Um, and then, and then I really just sort of went for it. But I suppose I just like did the sleeves and the body, which like it's not the stuff that she struggles with. Um, and so she just finished the body. And so we were chatting about the sleeves and we were talking about Magic Loop and she hasn't done Magic Loop before. So she was really not keen. And so I said, okay, I'll have a look if there's anything else. And I found the Knit Pro short, like very shorty set. And so I, this is the only one I found. It's like this kind of, for lack of a better word, kind of weird <laughs> denim set, which like, I'm, I'm not anti-denim, but I just like a bit random. Um, and it has these really, really short needles needle tips um so it ha it goes from three millimeters it has three 3.5 4.5 i think five 5.5 and six um and i couldn't like i looked pretty extensively i would say to see if i could find like these individually um because I, I did want them to be what is it in the knit pro universe so like I believe that Knit Pro and Knit Picks, and there's another brand which are all the same. I wanted it to be in that family, but I couldn't find them individually. So like if I pull, here's a, this is the 5.5. It's like, is that? It's very short. I reckon it might be as short as my um, Chow Goose. My, I have short, I have shorty Chow Goose, but they're only for socks. Like I don't think that they sell the five millimeter, five mil, five mil, five centimeters in the bigger sizes. This is the only ones I've found. Um, and so I was like, I like knitting. I'm sure I will enjoy these. So I I was like, I'll buy them and you can use them. And she's like, I'm happy to buy them. I was like, yeah, but I, I want them. So I bought them and she's using the four millimeters at the moment. I'm using the three mils on my the neck of my um, Moby neck. And I love them. I will admit that I am not using, so they come with two very short cables. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head what size they are, but they're pretty small. Um, I am not 
using either of them as you can see i have a 40 centimeter cable that i'm using which is one of the mindfulness collection which is a swivel cable um and i think swivel cables just make it a lot easier so i gave my grandmother one of those to use on her sleeves because i think the i tested them knitting the sleeves of my leon and i was like with the really short cable with the really short needle a 40 centimeter cable is actually fine for a sleeve i found um and so we're just using those um, I might use these. I might use the short cables if I need to, if like it's getting particularly small, but at the moment it's fine. So she's using one of those and I'm using one and I'm a fan. I, yeah, I've never seen them. I think I have seen one person using them, maybe. Not like these ones, but short ones, but I couldn't find any singular, like just like one size. Like a, when am I gonna use six millimeters? Haven't yet. Maybe I will, but like, yeah, so I probably wouldn't have bought a set if I didn't have to. But then I also like, I've already used the three and a halfs. She's using the, using the fours and will use the three and a halfs. So three, three and a halfs, threes, three and a halfs, fours. And then I have the, my sweater number 18, 15. My like cables knit sweater is four and a halfs. So I'm like, that's four of the sets that I'm confident will get used. Um, and so we will see how the rest of this goes. But yeah, that I bought those. I love them, they're so fun. <laughs> um, and I do, yeah, so I already have Chowgu short-ish ones. What's interesting is these are shorter than that. Um, so I sort of don't know, I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of needles. <laughs> um, and they, it kind of feels like oftentimes they fulfill different purposes. So. I'm kind of happy to have a lot of pairs. So yeah, that is all I have to show you. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten all the way to the end, um, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, if you if you liked it, it would be great if you would give it a like. The old YouTube algorithm loves that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you're having a great day. Um, if you were knitting on anything while you watched this, let me know what it was. Or if you, <laughs> some of my friends tell me they do chores and put me on. So if you're doing that too, let me know what you got done. <laughs> But yeah, hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.